Today, TSM and Cloud9 face off once again for a spot in the finals. And as with every momentous clash between these two squads, the fans are out in full force to support their teams. TSM Academy picked up the win over T uh, C9 rather last night, and their LCS roster will look to do the same and make their way to St. Louis. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we hear from the coach and rookie of the split, and then preview today's match until the timer reaches zero and we jump into champion select. Now, in that half hour leading up to the series, we'll be exploring the history of C9 versus TSM and how this time feels different. But first, there's the matter of end of split awards, where Avali is standing by with Springs, coach of the split. Thanks, Dash. Rupert, surprise, surprise, you're coach of the split. Congratulations. Now, before we started this, I, I was trying to keep it a secret, but it seemed like you already knew. Oh, I was surprised. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I I actually think this split, I mean, the Coach Kane and me and Ziggs all doing great stops, but I actually thought Golden Guardians coach or Flycast coach gets some the coach of the split reward because they're doing really well. I do, I do want to respect the uh, props that you threw out to them. They did put up a really good fight for this entire split, but kind of looking at you, this is your second, or rather, back-to-back -back Coach of the Split award. Last split, you guys had the crazy roster changes, the benching, you guys went from 10th place to second place. So has this split been a little easier for you? A little bit easier. <laughs> if, you, if we compare it to the last one, yeah, this one is a little bit easier. Only a little bit. Only a little bit. Well, with that being said, what was your biggest obstacle for either you or for the team for this split? Uh, I don't understand what is the question means. Biggest obstacle? Yeah, what does that mean? Oh, okay. Uh, toughest thing that you had to accomplish. Challenge. Uh, play with Anisky, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because it's uh, uh, kind of... <laughs> hard to play with so we train him as a warrior we train him as a <laughs> strong mid laner <laughs> yeah before one was so we had a jensen right so jensen was biggest like lane dominate the player and win lane win game that kind of player so we used to be play only that kind of mid laner but niski uh, i'm okay with giving up my uh, mid lane you know that kind of style mid laner, so we're training him hard. <laughs> that was the biggest challenge. All right, well, really quick, you go against TSM today. Quick predictions. 3-0. Uh, 3-0. I am excited to see that game. Reaper, again, congratulations on Coach of the Split. But before we get into that game, Riv is standing by on stage with our Rookie of the Split. Thank you very much, Avali. I am joined by our 2019 Spring Rookie of the Split. It is FlyQuest Viper taking that home. <laughs> Absolutely. First off, congratulations. 2016, you started with TLA. Now you stand on the stage ready to play in semifinals tomorrow for the LCS. This year, you kind of talk about a bit of turmoil and how you've worked through it. What, overall, what has the journey been like for you and what does it mean to be here? Honestly, I'm really glad of how far I've become or I've come. And uh, it's been a long journey, I'd say. I expected a little better of myself, but uh, it's pretty good so far. I didn't expect to... Uh, uh, get here, become like the fourth place team, uh, but it only goes up from here. We've heard you say that a lot, and I have to say, not expecting to be here is a little weird. You have 10,000 games on a champion you have brought into the LCS, that Riven play that you are so known for. What did it mean when your team got behind you and you were able to showcase that skill? It's, it, was, it was good, like honestly, it's, it's hard for a team to pick up a, you know, a one trick, a ribbon player that has that many games on a champ. They're like, oh, can he play other champs? Can he do other stuff? But they saw the mechanics that I had, I guess, and uh, they really wanted me on the roster. So they thought I can translate my ribbon mechanics to like other champs, and that's what's been going on. Do you think you'll break out ribbon tomorrow? Yeah, for sure. All right, I like that. Back in January, final question. You had an interview where you talked about Impact being such an influence for you and you respect him so much in the top lane from your time on Team Liquid Academy. What does that matchup have for you in terms of importance and what does it mean to you to take Impact on in the semifinals? Uh, this means a lot to me because, you know, I've learned under him for a while. I've always listened to his comms when I was on TLA. Uh, he's just, he's always been a player I looked up to, but now it's my time to to show that I'm the, I'm the better player. Viper, thank you so much. Once again, your 2019 Spring Rookie of the Split, Viper. 
Our coach and rookie of the split, Reaper and Viper. Of course, Viper will be taken to the stage tomorrow. Reaper probably jumping up there behind his squad right now to give them the last minute pep talks, but uh, much deserved awards for both of these. Yeah, guys. and I've had the pleasure of actually being coached by Reaper. And the thing that he does really well is he gives a lot of players the authority to make choices. So it makes you say, during champ select, I'm not making the draft. You are going to decide what you want to play, and you need to understand the game at the same level that I do. And that really elevates everybody's game sense and I think that's why you see a team that's very cohesive at both the Challenger and the LCS level. Right. And to follow your point, I've gotten clapped by Viper in solo queue yeah. just a couple of times <laughs> to the point where Riven's a pretty good bat in solo queue. I do recommend it. There's quite a lot of Challenger one-trick Riven's up there. Well, he's no longer a one-trick foot. Good yeah. fan. I mean, he was kind of the front runner from the early stages as the favorite for Rookie of the Split, but the coach of the split race was really tight. You heard Reaper give props to a lot of people. Almost half the league <laughs> was getting props yeah. out of this split, and I think this is one of the closest finishes we've ever had. It was definitely a more contentious vote than the Rookie of the Split. Either way, the performance of the Cloud9 roster has been phenomenal this split. We'll see if it's enough to take down TSM today. We are taking a quick break, but on the other side, we'll say goodbye to another uh, LCS team eliminated from the playoff race. And the top teams make their pitch for a run at MSI. All that's coming up after this. Welcome back to the LCS Countdown, where we're about 20 minutes away from TSM versus Cloud9, our first semifinal. Last week, FlyQuest took Golden Guardians to five games to earn their spot in the top four, whereas TSM took down Echo Fox in four games after dropping that first one of the series. As a result, Team Liquid selected FlyQuest as their opponent tomorrow, which means we get a matchup LCS fans have time and time again seen, but one that never disappoints, TSM versus Cloud9. And with last week's results in the books, it's time to say a fond farewell to another team in RIP Echo Fox. Some people say like Echo Fox is one of the worst team, but I don't th feel like it. They're good. <laughs> I'm diving, I'm diving, I'm diving, I'm diving. I'll die for you, I'll die for you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's go, go, let's go. go. I pull the pants oh, on your left. Wait, TP, can you end? Because we, no, we, we, <laughs> we can't end. We can't end. We can't end. We can't end. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We have a crew. Your first Penta. Yeah, that was actually Penta. my first Penta, I think. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine risking losing the game for a Penta. <laughs> Just kidding. We cannot lose. We can't lose. <laughs> against the walls. They have to win now. Rush going forward towards Sven. He's got to be careful. He's found out. That is a huge pick. DSM pick off the opposing jungler. Uh-oh. Smoothie now behind Haku. Oh, doesn't get away with the W. He's going to find someone to run to. Not going to happen. A double kill for Bjergsen. TSM are poised with complete map control to go for Baron. Already six teams have departed the stage, leaving fans to wonder where they should throw their support. So to make their case to be North American reps, we've got a few honorary representatives for each team left competing. We're going to start with High for the C9 camp. Haven't we heard the same empty promises from previous teams time and time again? Cheer for us, we'll bring home international success. Fans are catching wise, the choice is clear, Cloud9. Support the only team that has the means, the cosplayers, and a proven track record of delivering on the international stage. And another thing fans need to ask themselves, which team would you most want to have bubble with? Cloud9, the only choice for NA, a choice you can trust. Thank you. Please clap. You know something? You know something? If you had told us one year ago that TSM was going to come into semis as a title favorite, well, we would have given anything for that. And you know something? You know something else? Not only are we going to go to St. Louis, James Patterson, we're going to go to Vietnam, and we're going to beat SKT, and we're going to beat RNG, and then we're going to come back to North America, and then we're going to win Rift Rivals, and then we're going to win in Summer, and beat Griffin, and beat G2, and beat Invictus Gaming, and we're going to get our own skins, and then we're going to go to Worlds, and get out of groups, and then we're going to take back the Summoner's Cup! Yeah! 
TSM, Liquid, Cloud9. Haven't we tried these teams already? And what did we get? Same old business as usual, another international loss. That sounds crazy to me. Fans of North America, we're in deep, knee deep. We all know it. We dove into it like a duck, submerging itself into a pond for sustenance. But just like a duck, we don't have to accept what the pond has to offer. Uh-uh. We got wings. We can fly. Ladies and gentlemen, these three teams have attended every single international tournament since NA's inception. Since 2009, there have been exactly 69 international tournaments, and we have won two of them. Two out of 69. Is that the score you're satisfied with? What you aspire to? That is beyond mediocrity, my friends. It is AFK. It's time to turn this ship around, a complete 180, fellas. But guess what? Ships are old, and no one even likes water anymore. They like LaCroix. Ships turn 180 too slowly, but ducks don't. They're nimble and capable of sharp turns, unlike ships. And they also have wings. So let's stop the sinking. Begin our flight to redemption. Join us on this quest. Take a chance to change our circumstance. Fly quest! Yeah! Well, we've heard from three of our representatives for the incumbents, Team Liquid. We've got Joel standing by. Uh, all right, Joel, why Team Liquid? Well, I mean, you know, first, you know, they're the number one seed, they defending champs. Like, what more do I need to say? Uh, okay, yeah, those are all fair points. Uh, I got some questions, though, about the end of the regular split. One in three finish in the last couple of weeks. That would be concerning to most. Is it not concerning to you? Not concerned at all. You know, we uh, just wanted to keep it interesting for the fans. I mean, we're showmen, and that's... Basically, the Team Liquid brand. Just... I see. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's not suspicious at all. Hmm. Well, semifinals. I'll see you here for that after the break. <laughs> Stole my yacht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can remember every semis that I've played, who I played, what the score was, and because it's like, Every single match is that important. Cloud9 with their eyes on the Nexus, their eyes on the summer split. C9 TSM has always been like a really intense rivalry. Most of the finals in LCS have been C9 versus TSM. At the very beginning, we smashed them, but I think we lost the every other time. TSM once again, a NA LCS champions. Except for last year. They give Gerkson, it's a three for zero. Three-two victory for Cloud9! Of course, it always feels nice going up against TSM and being able to win against them. Having like the final say, like, yeah, haha, you lost against me again. I mean, in no way do I really compare TSM last year to the TSM that we are now. Finds the old friends, the Glenn Splash, not gonna got the first damage! Two games in a row! First blood to TSM! We're gonna do it differently, and we're gonna win this time. Last season, I think we were successful with the tools that we had. But now we have, you know, bigger and better tools. Everyone expects TL to win. That's my old team. They've been like dominating the whole regular season, and then like FlyQuest just randomly shows up and takes it out. FlyQuest defeat Team Liquid. I think that would be hilarious. I know he really wants to beat us and show that we made a mistake. We should have kept him. But FlyQuest, I mean, there's a reason why we picked them. We have the best chance of beating them. I'm always worried because in playoffs anything can happen. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to like take down a really tough opponent, and I think we are the really tough opponent. Back to back sweeps. TL's the best team in North America. Welcome back to the LCS Countdown, where the first semifinal gets rolling in just about 10 minutes. Today, we've got another chapter in the longest rivalry in the LCS, where both teams once again meet in a semifinal. Yeah, last time they met was 2017 Spring Finals, and that was a best of five, went the whole way. It was super hype, and they have matched up more than any other team in history of the LCS. Right. Yep. And they've played a total of 75 times against each other, most of any rivalry in the LCS. People always CLG, TSM. No, C9, TSM have 17 more games. Than well, it always makes good games, too, so you got to watch. All right, and they always extend those series, generally to four or five games. Two members, though, have consistently been in the crossfire of these struggles, and those members are Bjergsen and Sneaky. 
hockey, of course. No matter how much the teams have changed around them, these two guys remain the same. Yeah, and if you look at their all-time record, it looks like it's in C9's favor. Sneaky has 42 wins, 32 losses, whereas Bjergsen's just under 500 with 33 wins, 34 losses. But if you flip to playoffs, the story goes the other way. Sneaky's the one just under 500, and Bjergsen has the advantage of 17 and 13. So, gonna be another storied matchup between those two guys. Oh, yeah. playoffs is all that matters. Yeah, every time, right? That's where you actually get the trophy at the end. And I think if you look at recency, right, uh, you know, Bjergsen, or a lot of those wins for Sneaky come from the earlier days of Cloud9 when right. he made a the run. A couple of those are Reginald. <laughs> Three of those losses are Reginald. Yeah, very <laughs> much so. Uh, and we've already, of course, seen uh, what it takes to take down Bjergsen in the postseason. But just to further impress Bjergsen's insane record, he will be the first player in the LCS, in LCS history rather, to hit 100 playoff games during today's series. Game three is when it will happen. Exactly. We're guaranteed at least three games. He's at 97 now, so he will hit that 100 postseason games mark in this series. Just as we did last week, though, for Golden Guardians versus FlyQuest, let's see where the analysts put their faith lane by lane, starting with the top lane. To save ourselves a little time, I had them throw their faces up there during the commercial break. All three of you say that this is a Licorice favorite matchup. Yeah, I wanted to go as far as Hyde did, but I didn't want to cover his face up, so I went a little okay. left. But this is, for me, super in Licorice's favor. Right, there's no reason not to pick Licorice over Broken Blade. That might change throughout the course of the playoffs itself. But for now, there's no reason to say that Licorice is not the better top lane. I mean, I agree that Licorice is the better top lane, and that's why I went that way. But you guys are putting it almost all the way at 100%. And while he does have the flexibility that he's been playing carries and tanks, Broken Blade has been playing way more carries, and to me, it has a pretty substantially deep champion pool that you have to give him some credit to the point where he might have some crazy counter picks that Licorice may have not practiced against. Right, but you have to keep in mind with that giant champion pool that's shown here, there's a lot of losses on those champions actually, so it's a bit deceiving to say his champion pool is bigger when there's a lot of losses And, there. and champion pool doesn't mean different play styles either, so like I have no doubt that Broken Blade will not run out of carry champions in this matchup. The question is, if that stops working, like can they flip their play style another way? Because so far he has one Scion game, so it feels like they are stuck with him on the carry top uh, matchup. A peek at the top lane matchup. Let's jump on down to the jungle. So as you guys throw your faces up on the board, just as a reminder, this Whoa. is Sven Skarin versus Akkadian. Akkadian played in his very first playoff best of five just last week. Had some pretty impressive stats, but I think Ooh, you can't ignore the change in Sven when it comes to regular season of playoffs. Something miraculous happens. This is something we've always known about Sven. He always turns up when it comes to international games, playoff matches. He plays much better in those times. So he has so much experience in these high pressure moments, whereas Acadian has only had one playoff series. And to top things off, he really only played one champion in the rec side, so he hasn't been tested. His champion pool has not been attacked, and those are situations that if you're not used to in playoffs, they're going to happen, and you're going to have to be able to adapt quickly. I have faith that Sven could do it. Not yet in Acadia. Not yet. I think it would be closer to Acadian's favor if we knew that he was going to play like last series every time, but there's just not enough sample size to trust him mm. quite yet. And In the regular season, he did struggle with late game engages, which is going to be super important for both junglers. All right, so, so far, we're very much C9 favored in this matchup, but we still got three more positions to go. Let's hop on down to that mid lane. Of course, Bjergsen, who's going to hit that 100 mark in the postseason games today, up against Niski, the guy who replaced Jensen, looking to make his stamp on the LCS as well. Damn, all high all you. the way over. Woo! All right, right, high. I have some personal experience playing versus Bjergsen and Niski, and to be fair to Niski, it was quite a while back, but there's a large difference between the two, and just looking at both players, I gotta say Bjergsen is pretty dominant compared to every other mid laner that's played in the LCS, and I don't see that changing with Niski. Uh, that's a graveyard right there of all the <laughs> mid laners that Bjergsen has Don't beat. worry, you're at the top of the pile. Yes, bro. I am happy about that. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Uh, of course, Golden Glue, the only undefeated mid mid laner against Bjergsen in the postseason is uh, available to sub in <laughs> if Cloud9 needs him as they did just last year against Bjergsen. But of course, they will be starting with Niski. So let's talk a little bit more about that matchup. Mark, why are you uh, willing to put it uh, that close? I think it's really important. The, both these guys are the highest in kills and assists at 15. And so this is the heat map of their kills and assists at 15. Bjergsen is red and you'll see there's a lot more focused around the mid lane for Bjergsen. Uh, but when you go up to the top side of the map, it is heavily Niski favored in terms of where these kills are happening. With TSM's 
you know, play style being so top lane focused, C9s is the same and they do a better job of getting Niski out there and influencing that. So that's where the concerns about Broken Blade start factoring in. It's not just about the mid lane and Niski himself says this all the time. I don't really care about my mid lane matchup specifically, it's about helping elsewhere. Something super interesting about that heat map, only Bjergsen is fighting around blue buff. Niski has no instances where he's actually <laughs> yeah, he's, contesting that objective. I don't care about that. Yeah, so that, what's up with that? I think that Bjergsen knows that these objectives are very important. When you play against TSM, they will always contest the buffs every single time, and you see just that blue buff. does it. Just red, blue buff. Red, 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 red. I think it's a really interesting <laughs> conversation, too, You know, to look at the mid lane and say, all right, within the lane itself, Bjergsen favored, but what happens when the guys get out of the mid lane, and, and if that's the reasoning why you're willing to say, okay, the matchup's a little bit, you know, he's gonna go affect the top lane more, and that's where I think the matchup hinges around, then hey, now it's only a 60-40 matchup instead of yeah, I, I wish I moved that a little further. Okay, what would you right? say? Would you say 65? I'm committed yeah, still. Yeah, a little, I'm, five five more okay, I'm still enough. committed. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the ADCs then. Sneaky, the other long-standing member of these organizations for Cloud9, oh, up against see. Sven. Oof. Sven. Whoa! Is that right in the middle? That right in the middle, James. Smack dab in the middle. Oh my goodness, all three of you are in agreement here. Okay, We're so on, I'm not in the middle. We're on so, side. Okay, slightly on Sven's side, but the closest matchup we've had so far here on this cork board. Let's start with the two guys who are slightly Sven favored. Right, I love Sneaky, but they're very similar in their play in that they're both very consistent AD carries that aren't extremely lane dominant. They'll do their jobs in lane. But when I think about Sven and Sneaky and the difference is that I think Sven is a harder carry than Sneaky is. When it comes to super late games, I believe Sven has the edge and be able to pull out the team fights. I think he's a little bit more consistent in lane as well. Uh, and I like that they have played some more lane dominant things. So they get a power point on the map so they can more easily play around the top side. I like how they all work together. And I think Sven is just slightly, slightly better this season. I think it's gonna be really interesting about the Varus pick. We saw it be heavily contested in the previous series. Sven has a match on there. And while we know Sneaky can play it, guarantee you that pick is gonna start turning up because being able to engage from the bottom lane is gonna be huge in unlocking the rest of the team to play whatever carries they need. My favorite aspect of the bottom lane is the fact that it's a duo. So we have to consider the supports when we're talking about this lane in its entirety. I have so many Smoothie pins. versus oh, Hazel. You can take some of my pants. I don't know, just in case he right dropped them or something. Right smack dab in the middle. Right smack dab in the middle again. So we have a very even matchup here in the bot lane, it seems. I mean, Zazel and Smoothie are practically some of the best supports that the league have alongside Core JJ and with Sven and Sneaky being so close, this matchup is most likely just going to be determined based on the champions that they select. So when it's so much about champions, I tend to gravitate towards 50-50 because you don't know what to expect in the draft. Right, they're both huge playmakers that have last shot calling prowess as well. It's hard for me to decide which support I liked better. And I, I really think they're very similar to each other. They're really, really similar. I think Zazel has been a little bit better over the course of the year, so I'm gonna favor him just a little bit. And I liked how he, does a good job of making a lot of engages, and you can hear shot calling is super, super clean, where sometimes Smoothie gets a little energetic. So it seems, it's very interesting to me that we, we seem to have kind of agreement here in the consistency of the bottom side of the map for both of these teams, and then large disparity in terms of the matchups from mid jungle to the top lane. The next consideration is how this might factor into your three's predictions for this mm -hmm. series today. So, who do you think's booking the first trip to St. Louis High? We're gonna start with you. Well, I have to go with my team, Cloud9, because I supported them with my political campaign, and here I am supporting them again to go to St. Louis. <laughs> All right, fair enough. A 3-2 prediction, though, so you're calling it a close one. Yeah, I don't foresee it being a 3-0 like Reaper says. If he does get a 3-0, I'll buy him some dinner or something like that, but I <laughs> doubt it. I, I see this being a 3-2. Fair enough. Crumbs, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that Cloud9 is going to be able to take this one home. Even though I have been saying for a while that I thought TSM would be the favorites in the entire playoffs, look at this chart right here. C9 has two members that are already heavily favored towards them in a meta that favors the top side of the match. I'm not sure how much Bjergsen is going to be able to skew this matchup. This to me is the X factor, Niski. So because we have yet to see him perform against Bjergsen, I'm going to take the safe bet and go with Cloud9's top lane, 3-2 for them. All right, Mark, you're the biggest C9 fanboy on the board. Well, so, I mean, uh... what are you talking about? I, I, I vouch for TSM with my political campaign, <laughs> and true. I'm going to flip flop and also oh. take C9. Whoa! But I'm actually going no 3-1 because I don't, even though this is really close, and I think TSM has a good chance of actually winning the series, it doesn't feel like a 3 2 series where it's going to be back and forth. I feel like play style will be so important for what happens, and I think it's really in C9's favor, the play style, and we can go into that forever, but. Unless yeah. TSM changes things up, plays more around mid lane, plays more around bot lane, and, and doesn't play to the top side, I think this is heavily in C9's favor. Uh, and I don't think unless, you know, one of the two styles will win, and it won't be this back and forth 
like you see with the Golden Guardians FlyQuest series. I mean, I think it, it, it's so, uh, uh, you know, it resembles so well what we saw in the regular split. We had the idea of the rock, paper, scissors, uh, but we also talk about, you know, Cloud9 coming back in those games and their ability to find that one turnaround fight somewhere in the game, as well as the playmakers who can make it happen. All three of you agree that this will be a top side focused matchup? I, it should yeah. be. That's what yeah. we've seen all season Bot long. Bot lane is so close to each other, right? Yeah. In top lane, there's a big disparity. And then for mid lane, a big disparity too. So it's going to be the entire top side of the game that's going to make it for us. It's oh. so much easier to be, play safe in the bottom lane right now, whereas you have any matchup top lane, it's so easy to dive in and just snowball it out of control. And to hop on to the point about the rock, paper, scissors and some of the game time stats you've heard us referencing and some people in the community think we're just throwing those around, what you need to understand is when TSM wins from behind, they're going up against the fastest team in the league. So if you fall behind versus C9, you're going to probably get crushed. Right. And then when you have your slower games, which they do have a lot of fast ones more recently for TSM, but if you do have a slow win, C9 also has a lot of comebacks as well. And they do really good at these kind of, if you look at their gold graphs, they're not these slow comebacks in the game. They're, as our stats team described it, a hockey stick. Yes. Where it's this, and then boom, they're suddenly in control. And so they're such an explosive team that TSM does need to pick their pace up against them. The longer the game, the more opportunities the team has to find that one fight they need to turn it all around. It is a very interesting conversation. And of course, as you mentioned, the hot streak for TSM, you know, separating recency from the average of their entire split. Mm -hmm. You don't want to call week one a similar performance or, no. a good, or a good indicator of how they'll play in the playoffs themselves. You've heard from us about our thoughts on the matchup. It is a prediction for C9 across the board in a fairly lengthy series. With that, we're going to throw it out to the guys in the Battle Arena to get ourselves into this first best of five.